Now I want to give you some uh, good news. <laughs> this is the best part. <laughs> so, the first good news is that you are one of the one of the sectors in the world with more power. I don't know if you know this. You can, in fact, this is uh, the contradictions of capitalist development. They're very interesting, and I love to study this. Globalization was your problem, but is your lucky as well. Because globalization has made a huge world competition of salary, but at the same time, companies are absolutely dependent on transport and logistics. Absolutely dependent. So at this moment, when you stop a port 100 years ago, there would be strike, fighting in the port, but nothing will happen in Orlando, in New York, in Sao Paulo, in China. Now, if you stop this port in Miami or another port, something happened in all in the entire world. Because we live in just-in-time model production. Because companies do not have stocks anymore. They are permanently, daily, hourly dependent on stocks. That's why, that's why, in my opinion, comes the automation. That's the biggest question, is how you break unions' power. That's the biggest question. It's not about profitability. <laughs> but this, of course, demands a huge organization, money for organization and strategy. So these uh, three things are absolutely necessary. There is not a success struggle without organization. There is no success struggle without funding to organize. There is no success struggle without a clear strategy of where you are going, not where you are going in the next six months, where you are going in the next 20 years. I already told you my opinion. I wouldn't allow any crane if the result is not dividing the work for everybody that is inside without reduction of salary. That would be my main approach. And of course the companies will answer, therefore we don't automatize ports because the only profitability is to these missed people, there is no other one. So this shows who is playing for the good of humanity and who is not. The second thing is, again, dialectically, the contradiction is that what is your strongness is also your weakness. You are a highly corporativist sector. This means you are a big brotherhood and you have big trust relations, you are pretty much together, you have a huge conscience of class conscience. But at the same time, you are very close in your sector. So usually it's very difficult to see uh, dock workers to dialogue or organize a struggle with other transport sectors or with other sectors. And this would be, this would be certainly something uh, it's very difficult to organize, I know. But for example, if you can put in the same struggle a relation between dock workers and truck drivers, then you can, then you can, then you can rule the country. <laughs> it's better than Obama or, or Trump or Hillary. <laughs> so, apart from this joke, I was serious on this. I know it's very difficult because lots of unions are very bureaucratized. There is a problem how to deal with this. Uh, let's say, social consensus, unions, etc. But an effort to go beyond dock workers and have a dialogue with other workers would be, I think, very important. And with other workers around the world, there is really a problem of unemployment. Automation is not just threatening you. I'm now studying the TAP process, and the TAP is the... Uh, company, the airplane company in Portugal, the automation in airports is making hundreds of 
thousands of unemployed workers around the world. Everything is becoming automatized. So this is, even if, for example, translators are becoming in some way, uh, substitute, uh, they are substituting by machines. So trying to have a broader look over this huge problem, that of course keeps your unity and your independence because that also what makes you strong is that you are a strongly independent um, union. And the last thing would be certainly what you know much better than I, what you have teach me, by the way, which is how can internationalism not be just a slogan but a real action. So uh, if you can go uh, and give this example to the world, that uh, for the f because there are lots of companies, as you know, for example, Volkswagen workers, they meet together frequently in Brussels, where their main task is to, to offer less and less, is to say to the companies, please bring your company to our country because we earn less. Uh, this is what is happening in co-management system. You are probably, I cannot say this for sure, but for sure among the unions I know around the world and I know a lot, you are the only one that these internationalists, you are the only one that when meets, meets to do, to say what we are going to do together, you, for this, for with the same goal for everyone. So, and I think today this is not a romantic approach. It's the only way we uh, can uh, save ourselves, we can have a better world if internationalism, which is the other side of capital globalization, uh, if internationalism can really become a reality. You can be a great example for the entire world. Thank you very much. Thank you.